So today, my topic is actually manifesting abundance. And so I, I really like this because, you know, Ernest Holmes says that grace is the divine givingness of spirit. That, and one of the ways we, another way we say that here is that spirit, God within us, is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. So the science of mind teaches us that God has already made the gift. God is always making the gift. And it is our job to be able to receive that gift. Ernest Holmes says again and again in the textbook that the receiving is first mental. It is first a mental activity. So we all have, um, I think, a connection. Uh, I know we all have a connection to the infinite. We have an infinite capacity with regards to how we show up in the world because we're all connected in our own unique, special way to the infinite mind of God. Now, in the science of mind, we say often that there is infinite potential within you. And I remember hearing that when I first came into the teaching and thought, wow, I like that, but I just don't know if that's, if that's real. Is that true? But then as I began to deepen in my study of the teaching, I realized, well, yes, absolutely that is true, because if God is infinite and God is within me, that means the infinite potential of God really is within me right now. So this does not mean we have to be uh, always uh, expressing it, but I think it's important that we're aware of it. It's important that we know that there is a connection within us, that we are connected to the divine, and that there is right now an infinite capacity to grow, expand, heal, evolve, embrace life in a greater way than we ever have before. Now, this does not mean that we have to be the very best at everything we set our hand to, because I think, I think in fact, we, we don't. I think the bigger, more important thing is, that, is to do stuff because we love it. So where this came from for me was recently I was walking my dogs, because I, I, get, I get a lot of download when I'm walking the dogs, you know, it just, it just sort of happens that way. It's like God saying, okay, finally, you're not talking, now you can listen. And uh, so I was walking by, uh, by a house in, in Burbank, in a, a, what I think of as an older neighborhood, older homes, these post-war homes in Burbank. And we're walking by the end of someone's driveway, and the, and the garage door was open, and there was this old guy in the garage, and his garage must have had 60 years worth of stuff in it. But what I noticed was it was enormously well organized. You know, I mean, it was one of those garages where like, you kind of like go, whoa, somebody really spends a lot of time here. And, and clearly he did, because then I was fascinated, I was hooked, and we walked by a couple of other days, and it was the same scenario. This old, older guy was in there, and he was tinkering with stuff. He, do you remember tinkering? Right? That, 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 that people used to do that a lot. He was just in there, like, I don't know, fixing a toaster or something. And he had all these tools and all these supplies. And there was wood in the rafters and all this stuff. And, and it just brought me back to when, when I was a kid because I remembered when people did that. And yes, at some point it evolved and there was an, a recliner in the garage and, and a TV uh, for some people. You know, before, but this was long before there was man cave-ness, right? This was where you know, uh, gentlemen often went to, to, to fix things, to putter. Putter? Who putters? God, that's great. You know, so I think it is a... So what I said, my observation was that this guy was out there puttering in his garage because he liked to do it just because he liked to do it. And I think it is a huge disservice to ourselves as spiritual beings. Uh, I think it is a huge disservice to the evolution of our soul to not do something because, one, we think we're not great at it. And, you know, and I don't want to do anything I'm not absolutely the best at. And I think what we also say is, well, I'm not going to do it if I can't make money at it. And I think both of those things are really disservices to the evolution of our soul. Because sometimes... You know, the universe, God, spirit within us just says, putter here, tinker here, just because it will bring you joy. That is right there enough of a reason why. And see, I think that this is connected to how, uh, to our capacity to manifest greater abundance. Because, you know, if we say no to things that we're not great at, and we say no to things that we can't make money at, then I feel like we're closing doors to the universe, and the universe is not able to give to us in ways that it could. You can do it just because you like it, 
just because it brings you joy, just because it expresses something that is deep inside of you is more than enough reason to engage in something. You know, it, so again, hearkening back to olden times, you know, in olden days, I remember people who, um, it, it seemed to me like everybody did something, but people would, would paint. You know, they would paint pictures or they would paint furniture or they collected coins and stamps. I think with the internet, the, the magic of collecting things has kind of gone away because you can always just find it. You know, you don't have to paw through old stores looking for stuff. You can just put on a tab on eBay and they'll let you know when somebody is selling it, you know? But I remember people getting together just to, to, my mother belonged to a group of ladies where they knit and crocheted all the time. And I had an aunt who loved to sew. I mean, she sewed all the time on her mother's sewing machine. I think it was the original sewing machine. But you know, um, people, people used to refinish furniture and stuff like that. Now I think they did it just because they liked it. And this is something that I think we're missing now is that we don't necessarily do stuff just because we like it. We think, oh, I can't, if I'm not really good at it, I don't want to put my time into it. Or if I can't make money at it, I don't want to put my time into it. And I think that's the wrong message to put out into the universal mind. Remember, there's infinite potential within us. That doesn't mean you have to be five-star, super-duper excellent at everything you lay your hand to. You can do it just because you like it, and that is absolutely enough reason because then the universe says well this is a this is a participant in the game who really likes to play this is somebody who is just enjoying life and 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 experiencing it as much of it as they possibly can so i think you know we don't we don't start out as excellent when we undertake something new you know in um, in buddhism they talk about um, you have to have an empty rice bowl. I love that image, you know, because every morning the monks go out in, in, in countries where there are uh, monks who rely on uh, the kindness of the community. Every morning the monks go out with their begging bowls and they trust that the universe, by means of us, are going to fill that rice bowl up. And that's what they get to eat for the day, is just that. But like that, I think it's okay. In fact, I think it's good. It's better than okay. It's really good for us to sort of take on that beginner's mind and show up at the universe's doorstep with an empty bowl. You know, the, 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 just because I, I think we don't want to be beginners, is, is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, like, I, like, I want to start something new, and I want to be great at it right at the beginning. And if I'm not great at it right at the beginning, well, clearly this was not meant to be. But if we don't just do it, I think we're not releasing part of that divine potential that is within us. And you know, under that divine potential that's right here, there's more divine potential. And sometimes you just have to do this to get to something else. You know, and, that is, and I believe that that is part of the process. So the saying no to things, no, I can't do that because I'm not really good at it, what I think what that does is that contributes to keeping us small. It keeps us safe. It keeps us kind of close into the shore. Because, you know, the human personality, now not the divine part of you, but the human part of you, the human part of me says, mm, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. So we don't venture forth. We don't express all of what is within us. But, you know, the way God gives to us is God gives to us through the realm of ideas. So if God drops a little idea in your head, I think generally we're supposed to follow it. If it wouldn't be hurtful to self or anyone else, when God drops the idea in, I think we're supposed to go with it. So the other day, again, a divine moment, walking my dogs just a block away from my house. And as I was walking by, walking my dogs, somebody had put, I thought this was great, this great rocking chair out in front of the house. Now, it was clearly really, really old. And I looked at it, and I even rocked it a little bit, and I thought, hmm, this is really nice. I could refinish this. Now, as soon as I said that, I thought, you don't have time, you don't have room, you've got too much on your plate right now, refinishing furniture is the last thing you need to do. But But I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, this is really interesting. This is unlike any rocking chair I'd ever seen. The design was really interesting. And I thought, you know, 
I could just do that for the fun of doing it. I don't even have to keep it. I could just give it away. I could bring it in the bookstore and I could sell it in the bookstore mm -hmm. for the church. It would just be a fun thing to do. I knew how to fix it. And so I said, well, I'm going to go around the block. And if it's still there, and you know it wasn't, when I came around the block, it was gone. It was gone, and I'm like, I lose the rocket ship. But clearly somebody came behind me and also had this great idea. And so I missed out. I missed out on the opportunity. Now I know something else will come along because it always does. There is no end to my good. You know, I believe that that's so. But, you know, but I, I think what I did, though, was that I, in, I essentially said to the universe, I'm going to keep myself small by not doing this. You know, the, 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 because that's what our human personality often does. The bottom line is what you have to give to life is enough right now for each and every one of us. But, you know, the, I don't have to be the best furniture refinisher in the world. If that was just a fun thing for me to do, you know, on a, uh, on a weekend afternoon, that in itself is absolutely enough. So what I say to us today is, so go ahead and paint and dance and write and create and express because you enjoy it. That, I think, is absolutely essential to expanding our consciousness, to expanding our spiritual nature. When, you know, we've heard the term of, um, of somebody being a Renaissance person. People are not so much Renaissance people anymore. Have you noticed that? Because it used to be you would meet somebody and say, oh my God, she is a Renaissance woman, or that is a Renaissance man. And, what, and you knew what that meant. When somebody said that, we absolutely knew what that meant. It meant they kind of had their hand in a whole bunch of pies. And I do love pie, I'm here to tell you. So I, I, I definitely want my hand and my face in a lot of pie. You know? So now I think everybody, so, the way I think spiritual principle works is I think everybody, every single person on the face of the earth, earth was born to do good things, even better things, all right, great things. Everybody was born to do great things. Uh, now, great things, uh, that's not just, um, you know, come up with a cure for cancer. I think that starts with, well, it covers everything. I think, you know, raising children and being a good citizen and teaching school and doing your best at your job, whatever your job is, and being a good friend and on and on and on. You know, doing great things doesn't look one way, right? So this too, to me, is, is the grace of God. When, when we're, if God gives all to us and we give of the highest and best that is within us, we are in fact expressing that grace of God, that, that, that you can... Um, you can make a difference in whatever is in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a huge disservice when we say, well, I can't do anything here. There's nothing I can do here. I think in any situation, you can say to yourself, I have something to contribute. See, because what that tells the universe is this is a person whose inherent nature is abundant. When you say, I can always contribute something of value to any situation, the universe says, this is a serious player here. This is somebody who knows their connection to the divine source. See, because I believe, I believe that holding back, we experience, well, how do I want to say this? I believe the holding back that we experience again and again in life is not because of what is outside of us. Although there is enormous agreement in the conversation of the world that what is outside of you is holding you back. I believe that what holds us back is because of what is inside of us, and I'll just blanket call it fear today. It's that fearful conversation that's in our head or that fearful conversation in the world that we seem to have a really good ear to always pick up on. Yes, right? So, so I think we have to give ourselves permission. That's it. That's the thing. We have to give ourselves permission, you know, and only we can give ourselves permission. Because other people can say, oh, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. But if we haven't come to that place within ourselves, you know, it, 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 will, it will never come to pass. I think an aspect of our personal power comes out of a profound level of self-acceptance. Look, you're fine. In fact, you're better than fine. You're perfect just the way you are because the way you are is the way God made you. And God is our true self a transcendent power and love that is within us, but not of us. It just happens to be there. Isn't that great? Like, you can't muck that up, and neither can I. Even on my worst day, even on my most unconscious, unloving, I hate myself kind of day, I cannot muck that up. 
that there is a transcendent power and love that is within me. And it just happens to be the truth about each and every one of us. I think this is hard for people to own, you know, that that is um, the real spiritual humility on the path. That, you know, nobody gets better when you put yourself down. Nothing gets better by us being hard on ourselves, you know? So the thing is to give yourself permission right now. Imagine if we did that, if we just gave ourselves permission to try things or do things because it's in. Remember, years ago, um, I had bought a house in Van Nuys, and, and close by, there was um, these public tennis uh, courts. And forever, I had thought, I, I, would, I would love to learn to play tennis. That sounds kind of fun to me. I sort of liked the outfit, you know, and that was really important. <laughs> it was important, you know. I mean, if we're going to take on a sport, I want a sport with a good outfit, you know. I don't want to. And so I signed up for, I don't know, a whole bunch of lessons. And I remember, I, it, this was years ago, and so I would go every, I don't know, Friday or Saturday morning, and I would have a lesson with this guy. And, and at the end of the lessons, he said, so you want to sign up for more lessons? And I said, no, I think I'm done. And he said, oh, OK. And so I was telling friends this later. And they said, so how's tennis going? I said, oh, I'm done with that. And they said, you're done already? Didn't you just start? And I said, well, yeah, I had like 15 lessons or something like that, whatever it was. And, and I said, but now I've experienced that. I'm fulfilled. I can move on to something else. And they're like, and I remember my friends saying, well, that was a huge waste of money. And I said, no, no, not at all. It was not a waste of money because it was always on my list of things that I wanted to try. So for me, it, there was no waste there at all. I had actually fulfilled a little dream I had. I tried it, was, got over it, was healed, realized I was never going to be hopping over the net. <laughs> and it was OK to move on to the next thing. You know? So the, the thing is to give yourself permission right now. You know, one of the things that I think we do that really disempowers us is that we compare ourselves to other people. And you know, in the mind of God, I don't think there's any comparison. Right? That, that, that's just not so, that God's will for each of us is to be happy. If you don't believe me, I want you to read the chapter on principles of successful living in the Science of Mind textbook. He says it right in there. Right? So as you succeed, that does not take anything away from anyone else. You know, what it does, in fact, I believe, is that it opens up the space in consciousness for other people to also succeed. You're showing them, look, this is possible. This is possible. Where we don't allow ourselves to, um, to, to shine, to succeed, to thrive, you know, I think, I think that's a mistake because God has already said yes. This is the grace of God. God has already said yes. You know, I think one of the most powerful lines in my life uh, from Jesus is where he says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I think that that abundant life includes everything, every good thing that would add to our experience of livingness. Now, I understand we all have areas where we're blocked. But let's be really clear. In the science of mind teaching, it is an internal limitation, an internal uh, blockage that, that we're experiencing. And we can be free of that because, again, scriptures teach us that with God, all things are possible. So you know that belief that something limits me, something restricts me, holds me back, limits my expression, you have to know that that's, that's just a belief. And people have been dealing with this for thousands of years. You know, the Jewish Passover, in the Jewish Passover, God saves his people from their oppressors who keep them enslaved. And so today, now we know God delivers his people from external as well as internal uh, limitation and bondage. So we are willing. We allow, you know, we have the capacity to cease sabotaging ourselves right now. And I would say a certain, a certain step on this journey is to constantly, constantly, every day, forgive everyone and everything. And yes, absolutely, that includes ourselves. That includes ourselves. You know that, that, that everybody misses the mark sometimes. But that's all it is. You just miss the mark and you pick yourself up and you go on. Because, you know, this. This idea of manifesting abundance. God has already given all the abundance. And it becomes our job to be gracious receivers, to accept it. And part of how we do that is that when God gives us an idea, we act on it. Let's pray. 
So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to just remember that right here, where we are, God is fully present. God that is spirit, God that is love, God that is infinite intelligence, God that is the potential that exists within each and every one of us. And so knowing we are connected with this, I know we're all connected with God, with each other, on the unseen side of life. And I speak the word for us that we are now manifesting an abundance of every good thing in our life. If it would add to our life in a healthy, joyful way, I know that the universe says yes. And so we say yes. This is our job today, to be open, gracious receivers of the great gifts that God is bestowing upon each and every one of us each and every moment of the day. We say yes to all of that. And so we include in our prayers today our family members, our friends and loved ones, and we remember that God is right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world so all of those places that are so troubled, where there is the appearance of so much discord and chaos, we claim the perfect activity of God's presence. We claim peace and love and order and all needs met. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that today all of us get raised up in consciousness, that we are open and willing and experiencing a greater portion of God's infinite good. And with a full heart, I just release this word. I know it's so. Together we all say, Amen. <laughs>